I know how hard it has been reading this capital, talking about the borders, the surfaces, um, the angles, the structures. I know it is very difficult to comprehend, but if you are right inside this video right now, just give me like five to six minutes. And I'm going to save you from the troubles of reading this capital while having a tough time, sleepless nights. So if you are new here, you are welcome to the SSG Nation. And if this is your first time watching a video from the SSG Nation, do make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so we can notify you when to eat. So, let's dive into it. Yeah, I'll come back. Now, talking about the scapula. The scapula. So to describe the scapula, we are just going to use the same acronym I taught you in our previous video for describing a bone. Now, and that is what? Your art slab. And now, the A is what? Any fact about the bone. Any fact about the bone. And the second A is the A, K, also known as so the T is the type of bone and the S is the shape then the L is the location the A is the articulation articulation and then the P is the part now let's get started now for this N part or aka this scapula is also known as the shoulder blade the shoulder what the shoulder Blade. So I'm talking about the type. It is a flat bone. It's the what? A flat bone. And now talking about the shape. It is triangular in shape. Triangle what? It is triangular in shape. And now talking about the location. The location of the scapula. Since the scapula is actually the shoulder blade, so it is located posteriorly to the what? To the rib cage. So it is located at the posterior part of the what? Of the rib cage. So posterior part of the rib cage. Posterior part of the rib cage of the rib cage and now the articulation. So articulation it articulates with two bones majorly. So the first one is the humerus, it articulates with the what? With the humerus and also with and also with the clavicle. Clavicle. So it articulates with the humerus at a place called the glenoid cavity. So we're talking about that, we're talking about the parts, and it articulates with the clavicle at the what? At the acromion process. So acromion. So the acromion process, so the acromion. Now we're talking about the parts. That is the deal. We are going to be talking about the diagram and the labels. So let me just quickly rub off the board and then we go into the diagram of the scapula and its explanation. So stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. Now, you know I said the scapula is triangular in shape. So I'm not going to be giving you the rule diagram of the scapula, um, of the scapula yet. So after this explanation, I'll be giving you the rule diagram. But now I'm going to use a triangle to explain the words, the scapula. So let's assume that we have a triangle right here. Triangle. So this is what the triangle looks like. A triangle has three sides. So let's say this is side A. And this is side B, and this is side C. So it means this triangle has what? Three sides. So let's note that first. Three sides. And after that, we have the words. We have angles. So we have an angle right here, another angle right here, and another angle right here. So it means the triangle has what? It has three angles. And now, we we'll know that this triangle it has two surfaces. So like this part we are looking at and the one behind it. So and that is what the surface of the triangle. Three. It has two surfaces now. Two what? Two surfaces. Now let's try and use this to describe the scapula. Since the scapula is triangular in shape, let's bring another triangle right here. So here is another triangle. So this side. Talking about the um, scapula, we don't call it side. We are going to swap it into what we call borders. 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 So, because this part 
is the uppermost border. It is the superior border. Superior what? Superior border. Now, since the triangle is having three sides, it means the scapula will have three borders. And that is the first border called the superior border. So it is the uppermost what? border of the, of, um, of the scapula. Now, what about the side B? Let's assume that this scapula, its relation with the vertebra is this way. So if this is the vertebra column, the person's vertebra. So the backbone, so the, 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 the person's vertebra column, which is the backbone. You know the backbone normally it is located at the posterior media part of the body. So at the back, so the middle part. So that is how we call the posterior media. So if that is the case, it means this will be the middle part, right? The middle part. So using this middle part, this side B is going to be called the media border. The media what? The media border. Why? Because it's closer to the midline. As simple as that. And now moving away from the what? Moving away from the midline, away from the midline, it gives us a new album called lateral. So this side will be called the lateral border. So as simple as that. So those are the what? The three borders of the what? Of the scapula. And that is awesome, isn't it? So now, let's do a quick recap. So if this is a triangle, this side here is the superior part. So it's called the superior border. And because this side is closer to the midline, the middle part of the body, it's called the media border. And right side, because it's away from the midline, we call it the what? The lateral border. Now we said the triangle is going to have what? Three angles, right? So this angle right here, it is connecting two sides, and this side and this side. Now let's apply this to this guy right here. Now let's start with this. You realize that if this is the superior border, it is where it, 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 it is called the superior border. Very sorry about that. It is called the superior border because it is actually the uppermost part. Now you realize that this angle right here, this one, is the uppermost angle. So this side right here is called the superior angle. Superior what? Superior angle of what? Of the scapula. Now talking about this. Okay, this is the what? This is the inferior angle. Inferior what? Inferior angle. Because the word inferior actually means down or below. Now, what about this? This is the lateral angle because it's away from the bottom, the midline. So it is the lateral what? The lateral angle. And now, naming those angles is actually not the big deal here. The big deal, what I expected to talk about um, while discussing this angle, is what borders are they connecting? So, for example, now this superior angle, it is connecting two borders, and that is the what? The superior border right here, and the what? And the media border. So, that is the function of the superior angle. It connects the what? The superior border to the what? To the media border. Now, what is the function of this inferior border? It connects this media, um, the inferior angle rather. It connects the media border to the what? To the lateral border. So, that is the function of the inferior angle. Now, let me leave the function of the lateral angle to you. So, it is to do what? So as simple as that, it connects the superior border right here. So we have the what? The lateral border. As simple as that. Now, let's go to the next thing, which, which, which are what? The surfaces of the what? Of the scapula. So as simple as it looks like. So like, the first side is just this space you are looking at, the surface. And the back is the what? Is the second surface. So same thing with the scapula, it has two surfaces. Which are the what? The anterior surface in front. Anterior what? Anterior surface and the second one is the posterior surface posterior what the posterior surface now what is the significance of this anterior and posterior surface now let's assume that this is the anterior surface the anterior surface is also called the coaster surface it's also called what the coaster surface why is it called the coaster surface that is the question right it is called the coaster surface because the word coaster means rib and because it is facing the ribs, so this scapula at the back is facing the ribs. So that is why they call the anterior part the coaster surface. So what is not the significance of this anterior um, surface? So let's assume that this is the front view. So there is a kind of fossa. So at the center of this word, of this anterior surface, and that is called the subscapular fossa. The subscapular what? The subscapular fossa. And the function of the subcapular fossa is to serve as an attachment for muscles. An attachment for what? 
matter to it for Moses. So, as simple as that. Now, a quick recap. If I talk to Mary for Stephen, <coughs> we said the scapula is what? The scapula has three borders. So, the superior border at the front end, then the what? The medial border and the lateral border. So, the superior and the medial border are connected together by the what? By the superior angle. And the medial border together by the lateral border are connected by the what? The inferior angle. And the lateral border and the superior border are connected by the what? By the lateral angle. As simple as that. Now, it has two surfaces. The first one is the anterior surface, also called the coastal surface. And why? It is because it's facing the rib and the intercostal cartilage and the nose. So, the posterior surface, let me quickly clean the board and talk about that. So, stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. Now, I'm talking about the posterior surface. So, let's assume that this is the posterior surface of the what? Posterior surface of the scapula. We have a kind of spine running from the medial border. So, look at this our medial border. So, the spine is here at the posterior surface and it runs towards the, the lateral angle. So, to form a structure called the acromion process. So, the acromion, let's call it the acromion. So, to form the acromion. So, this structure right here is called the spine. So, like talking about the posterior surface of the scapula, it presents the spine running from the medial border so towards the what? the lateral angle and it forms the what? it forms the acromion process so the acromion it serves an attachment for the acromion clavicular ligament so you can make reference to our video on the clavicle you understand this so now talking about the fossa we said the scapula has three fossa so the first one is the what? it's subscapular fossa in front it serves an attachment for monsoon we said that um, in, in, in the previous scene and currently now you realize that this spine is dividing this posterior part into two. So if this is the posterior part, the spine is here. It means you have some spaces on top and some spaces below. So this fossa on top is called the supra. The supra means a head. But supra what? Spine, above the spine. So we call it the supra spinosus fossa. Supra spinosus fossa. And now below it you can guess the name yourself, and that is the inferior, which is infra. Infra. So below what? Spine. Spinosus fossa. Spinosus fossa. So as simple as that. And the function of these two guys right here is to serve as an attachment for muscles. To serve as an attachment for what? For muscles. So as simple as that. Now, let me quickly explain something. So at this place, we have a cavity here. So at the left hand, we have a cavity here. The cavity is called glenoid cavity. Glenoid what? Glenoid cavity. Now, closer to this part, we have some kind of um, <coughs> process called the coracoid process, the finger-like projection. So we call it the coracoid process. Coracoid process. And the function of this coracoid process is to do what? It will serve as um, an attachment for the coracoclavicular ligaments. Coracoclavicular ligaments. So we simple as that. So, that is that about the words, about the landmarks of the words, of the scapula. I know it looks a little bit difficult at the posterior side, but when we start doing the diagram, we are going to be getting a better understanding of it. So, let me click on me and read the diagram of the words, of the scapula. So, stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah, welcome back. Now, that's about the diagram of the scapula. So, we are going to assume um, the shape of a triangle. So, but it won't be very smooth. Or let's just give it a try like this. Let's do this. So, you do like this. Draw a triangle first. So, draw the triangle first. Now, you start indenting it, turning it into what you want. So, you can rub this place off now and indent it a little bit. So, Now, this side, you modify it too. So, modify this side. Are you getting that? So, this last side, you modify it too as well. But don't forget, you are going to turn this place into the glenoid cavity. So, you bring in the curve. 
So as simple as that. And now we said we have a process here called the Kurakoi process. Finger like projection. Now, the next thing is what? Is the, um, let's assume we are doing the posterior part. So if we are doing the posterior part, we are going to bring in the spine right here. So the spine running from the media border. So to the what? To the lateral angle. And then come back. As simple as that. Now let's start labeling now. He said this is um the superior part of the world, of the, 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 the most superior angle rather. So we call it the superior angle. Superior what? Superior angle. And this right here is the inferior angle. So the inferior angle. Inferior angle. And right here is the lateral angle. So this place is the lateral angle. And now this border is the superior border. So we call it the what? The superior border. Superior border. And this is the media border. So you label it as the media border. Media border. And now this is the lateral border. So lateral border. So the lateral border. Lateral border. Now he said the lateral border and the media border are connected by the inferior angle. And then the superior border and the media border are connected by the superior angle. Now we said this one is called the coracoid process. So the coracoid process. And we call this the acromia process. So the acromia process. So we call the acromion. Acromion. Now this cavity we call it the glenoid cavity. The glenoid cavity. So it's articulated with the humerus. So to form the glenohumera joint. So it's articulated to the what? With the humerus to form what we call the glenohumeral joint. That is a joint between the glenoid cavity and the what? And the humerus. So it's from the shoulder joint. Now, beside this guy right here is the what? Is the spine. We call it the spine. And superior to the spine is what? Is the supraspinosus fossa. Supraspinosus fossa. And the one below it is the what? Is the infraspinosus fossa. Infraspinosus fossa. So, and that is the value of the value diagram of the scapula. And I want to tell you that you will enjoy this class and you understand the scapula class. So if you do, do make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if this is your first time watching a video from the SSG channel, do make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so we can notify you when we create a new video. Hi guys.